you will need these following equipment to get a successful lawn mowing business. What are these equipment? You will need a lawn mower, a leaf blower, a trimmer, and what I call the box. So I'm gonna go over in detail in many layers of these equipment and what you'll need in store. So let's begin. A lawnmower is a motorized equipment with a large base deck, spinning blades on the bottom with four wheels and a push handle. The lawnmower is the one that will cut most of the entire yard surface of the lawn. It also has a gas tank, an oil reserve, and comes with a clipping bag to hold your clippings when you cut your client's yard. A leaf blower is an equipment, sometimes handheld, and in this case, a backpack style, has a motor with a funnel hose to blow in excess any debris off the ground from any hardscape. And a hardscape is any surfaces that is not green or grass. So the hardscapes can be a patio, a deck, uh, pavers in the front, a stoop, both front and the back, those are hard services. And its job is to really clean off and really make a nice finished look after you've been lawn mowing, any clippings or debris can come onto the hard services. So the leaf blower really does a good job of making it a clean surface and to end the job well. This is a trimmer, sometimes called a weed whacker. And its job is to cut along any border along the edges, the perimeters of you or your client's yard, along the edge, along trees, along sidewalks, anywhere where the lawnmower could not have reached. The trimmer has a great purpose that it makes a really clean edge, clean cut um, look that really satisfies the visual aesthetics of a lawn that's been cut well. Okay, so we've covered all the equipment that you'll need. Now I'm gonna to go to the, the next level or the next layer of what you'll need to know. I'm gonna start with the lawn mower. What kind of lawn mower should you get? I'm gonna start with the range of lawn mowers that you may commonly think you'll know and instead let you know that it's not a process of selection, but rather a process of elimination. What you should not get to really quicken and accelerate that equipment that you should get. Start with the lawnmower. Lawnmower from the highest end to the lowest end. From the highest end, there's a, and there's the range between. So I'll start from the highest end. The highest end is the riding lawnmowers. You can easily, I would suggest you opt this out. For one, I don't operate a lawnmower, so I would have little knowledge on how to use a riding lawnmower. What that also entails other types of friction. You will need a vehicle with a hitch, not only a hitch, with a hitch, you will need a trailer. And after that, you need things to, you need a place to store your trailer. So all of these are types of frictions to having a riding lawnmower as well. Oftentimes as well, the lawns that we mow and that you might mow are in urban areas. The front and the back are spacious enough for a lawnmower, but the side easements might be too tight for a riding lawnmower and instead fit a regular push style lawnmower instead. So you can opt the riding lawnmower out. At the lowest end of the scale is the real push mowers. These are non-motorized. They're the very traditional, um, the old, the old fashioned, type of lawnmowers that have spinning blades that you push that cut a scissor-like on uh, the grass. There is no motor involved. These are great if you want to save gas and help the environment, but in the scope, in the realm of having an easy summer lawn mowing business, you are going to have to mow multiple lawns and you want to make sure that it want to be as easy as possible. These push style uh, you do need to use a lot of force to push it. It may not have a clean of a cut as motorized style push lawnmowers. And oftentimes twigs as little as my pinky can get stuck in the blades. So you can opt that out. So welcome the two types of lawnmowers you can consider. We have electric and gas powered. So I'm going to go with electric. Now electric can be broken up to two smaller components. 
we have wired plug-in and battery powered wireless. You can easily eliminate wired plug-in. You're going to be mowing your client's yard. That means you, if you had a wired lawnmower electric, you're going to need a plug-in using their outlet. If they even have outlets outside, if it's an older home, they may not have outlets outside. You're gonna to have to ask for permission and it may be uncomfortable with pricing. They may want a cut or may not like that you use their energy. These are points of friction, easily omit. We have electric battery powered. Electrical battery powered lawnmowers are lawnmowers that are powered with battery cells. They are really good for personal residential use. They require no gasoline. However, in the realm of running a business, you will need to mow many lawns throughout the day. And from the research, running a lawnmower on a battery cell will last one lawn or 1.5 lawns before the battery starts to run low and uh, stop working. Now, to do that, you may need to bring many battery cells, but the battery cells are quite expensive and you'll always have to keep it charged. So all of these things are not feasible in the context of running a business. So it is not preferred to run a lawnmower business with battery powered lawn mowers. So as you can see, electric is great, but in the realm of having an easy summer lawn mowing business, you're gonna have to mow multiple clients in a week, perhaps even in that day, and it just won't be worth in carrying the weight as well. Pros and the cons of having an electrical style lawnmower. Pros is that it's generally more quiet, much more quiet than a gas engine powered lawnmower. And it doesn't use gasoline if you uh, prefer not to use gasoline. The downsides of having an electrical lawnmower is that you will always have to have enough battery charges, battery packs to make sure that the lawnmower has enough power to cut and mow your yard, your client's yard. Often electrical lawnmowers are much, they're, they're more expensive compared to gas powered lawnmowers. And even after the secondary market, they're quite expensive as well. Not only that, but the battery packs after a couple of years need to be replaced. So that leaves gas powered lawnmowers. And in that can be broken up to two types of gas powered lawnmowers. You have your absolute basic traditional lawnmower that's gas powered. It doesn't have any rear front, rear or front extra motor or belt to help spin the wheels. It's all on you pushing the motor to cut the entire grass. And the second type of gas powered lawnmower are the self propelled lawnmowers. These lawnmowers have a tiny motor or a belt either in the front or the back wheels to help give the whole entire um, equipment, the whole entire machine extra push as you are pushing the lawnmower. It helps spin the wheel so that you don't have to push as hard. My kids love the self-propelled, for, but for me personally, both were fine either way. So the pros and cons of having a gas powered. The cons is that they are much louder. You always know, you can always hear the gas roaring in the neighborhood when you hear your neighbor cutting the yard. It has an internal combustional engine and thus it's just louder. Here are the benefits of having a gas powered lawnmower is that they, first of all, are much cheaper than their counterparts and especially in the aftermarket prices as well. Craigslist, Facebook, gas powered lawnmowers are extremely affordable and that is something to consider when you have to purchase a lawnmower. The parts, since there's so many, can easily be changeable or very familiar. If some person needs to replace, if you need to hire someone to replace it, there's so many parts readily available as well. And another benefit is that you essentially never run out of energy. As long as you have a gas tank, then you can always fill it up and you'll have more energy to go. Compared to battery powered, if you're out of battery, unless you have stacks and stacks of battery packs, you'll have to go home and charge it overnight. So you won't experience this with the gas powered. So continuing on your equipment, you're gonna need a trimmer or a weed whacker. They come in two primary parts. We have battery powered, which is the one that you see, and gas powered. And I can honestly say from after over six years of doing it, both work fine. 
that the battery powered nowadays have become quite strong that you can use for multiple lawns. The gas powered has its benefits too. You essentially run, never run out of gas. I do find that um, if you compare the charts, that battery powered are a little bit lighter. You don't have to pull the motor to start. Uh, they're a little bit quieter. Where gas powered, they are a little bit stronger. They are a little bit heavier. But you don't run out of energy as long as you have gas available. So these are the pros and cons. But in my honest opinion, both work fine. If you have a battery power that you love, continue, use, continue using it. If you have a gas power that you happen to find and love, continue using that. There's no distinction to really pick or choose one or the other. So rounding out the, the big equipment, we're at the last one, the leaf blower. Leaf blower has really evolved over time. They are lots, there's handheld ones. Again, to help you have the process of elimination, please eliminate any leaf blower that is wired, that it requires an outlet that is wired. Points of friction, you're gonna need the extension cords, you're gonna go all over and you're gonna need to have, um, you're gonna need to use your clients' outlet outlet. So that leaves gas powered and even battery powered leaf blowers. In my honest opinion, from what I've seen, especially in the newer and newer types, both battery powered and gas powered are fine, only because leaf blowing, clearing the debris of hardscape is such a quick and easy process and procedure. It takes only a few minutes to complete the job and most unlikely you won't run out of energy in either cases with the battery powered or the gas powered. Now in terms of style, the most common you'll see are backpack versions or handheld versions. I prefer the backpack style just so that it's less on my arm and it could rather be on my shoulder and hips. But I've worked with both. Uh, my children have worked with both. I do prefer the backpack style, but I have seen some people use handheld battery style and it looks, it's lighter, very quick. It's only minutes to use. And you can truly consider either having a backpack style or a handheld leaf blower. Okay, so we've covered equipment, the styles, the types, battery powered, gas powered. Now, how do you get them? Now, the easiest way is you can walk right into a Home Depot or any home center and buy straight off, brand new. It solves all your problems. However, all of these equipment that you've seen, I have never bought new. That's right, I bought them off the secondary market. Some of them were gifted to me and, and truth be told, some of them were already in my garage. So this is what my top to bottom, how I would recommend you to do. Number one is look around your house, look around close family members' houses. If they're not using an additional, any of these products, ask them if they don't need it anymore, if you can have it. Ask in your Facebook community, your Facebook friends, uh, close family members that you really, really trust if they have any, any equipment. I cannot stress the principle of asking. I don't think people ask enough, but ask thoughtfully. A good way to say, I'm starting a lawnmower in business or my children are starting a lawnmower in business. Does anybody have a spare X of these amounts? You'll be surprised. I can count more on one hand where people had an extra lawn mower in their garage because they upgraded to a, a newer lawn mower or a riding lawn mower and didn't have the heart to get rid of their old lawn mower. I've seen more than five times. I've, I know people who have done that. So please ask, ask, ask. The next step up is go to Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. Search up these items that you'll see if anybody is having them for free. And after that, if anybody is selling any of these items on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. <clears throat> and I'll show you uh, here how to do it more in detail. So in this clip i wanted to show you right off the bat the first things that you will need your equipment your big three i call it the big three okay you need a lawn mower your push lawn mower specifically a gas powered push mower and i already went through the specifics of why it's a gas power that you should go for and then you need a trimmer sometimes it's called a weed whacker uh, truly i do feel that nowadays both gas and or battery power are very much equal in its weight, equal in its quality. 
uh, so you can uh, have more choices in getting battery or gas powered. And then your last piece is the blower, the leaf blower. And again, because of uh, such improvements in manufacturing, you can go for both the gas or the battery powered. So what, uh, how are you gonna get them, right? We have three ways, we got free, we got new, and we got used. Okay, so the free, free is, how much is it gonna be? It's gonna be zero dollars. <laughs> battery powered is gonna be zero dollars. Gas powered trimmer is gonna be zero, zero, and zero. How is it gonna be free? Well, um, depending on your situation, you may, you know, because you take this course or you might already have this, some of these equipment in your garage, in your shed, I often employ that, I often really feel that you should ask. Please ask around. Uh, ask your close family and friends. Um, ask um, neighbors. If you're part of a church group, ask them saying, hey, I or my son or a friend of mine, they're starting a simple summer lawn mowing business. Do you have any equipment that you don't need anymore? Um, or you could sell for very cheap. Um, never, please, please never underestimate the power of free. Never, never underestimate the power of asking. You will never know what's out there. Oftentimes, there are free lawnmowers out in the front yard to be disposed of. All the equipment that I have were gifted, given to me because the person, um, they were upgrading to the higher end equipment. And so I <laughs> I got those for free, except for my, my uh, leaf blower, which I got on a secondhand Facebook marketplace. Okay, so please, please. Always consider, you may already, again, you may have this already. Someone you know may have an extra mower, an extra trimmer, an extra leaf blower, and they were just too um, reluctant to, you know, toss it away or to donate it because, I don't know, maybe they want to keep two around, and this is the perfect time to get one of those. So that is free, okay? Please, please never underestimate asking. We're going to go to new, brand new, out from the box from the store. So I have a tab here at Home Depot and we're just gonna go through some average typical prices. Um, I'm gonna go for the lower end spectrum for these equipment. So here we go, we go to Home Depot. I'm gonna look for push lawnmower, okay? Now push lawnmower, you can get, I'm not sure if it's listed here, but you can get uh, do not get battery, do not get corded electric. Um, very firm on that, go for the gas powered. And for gas powered, um, you might have a very traditional straight forward motor push uh, lawnmower. And I'm not sure if they listed on here or the slightly upgraded one is the one with the self propelled, which has a tiny little uh, belt either in the front or the rear that helps the wheel move forward so you don't have to it, 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 it rolls along for you okay um, there are quite a few prices and sometimes they don't say if it's a self-propelled and self-propelled is when it has the extra little belt okay so there's some prices here I'm I'm gonna average it if that's okay I'm gonna average it at 240 um, 240 for the mower now I'm gonna go for the, my trimmers, okay? So I'm gonna go back on here and find, I'm gonna do battery trimmer. All right, so these are all battery powered. Uh, battery powered, battery powered, weed whacker trimmer. And some of the prices here are listed. Um, they could vary by manufacturer, sometimes they come with extra batteries. Um, I'm, I'm kind of looking at this for the first time too. It might take some time to know what I'm looking at, but I'm assuming that the higher cost has like more, maybe a more powerful battery than the lower cost one. But I'm gonna do an average between 70 and 180. So I'm gonna price it at, um, gosh, generously at $100, okay? $100 for, battery power trimmer let's do a gas 
okay, and gas powered ones. Okay, so we're gonna have they are uh, mostly two cycle, two stroke engines, so you'll need that 50 to one fuel oil mix. Looking around, kind of getting a price. Um, I'm going to really average it. There's from 90 to 170, 190. I'm going to price it at 120. 120 for a gas powered. Okay. So um, now we're going to go for a leaf blower. It's going to be battery leaf blower. Okay, so here are some like handheld ones, and I've seen people, I've seen even the professionals use these. These, these, these are, have really improved the technology, powerful, but yet it doesn't have to be uh, an entire backpack. So here are some. I'm just going to take the first one that I see here. This is um, Ryobi at 99. Then I'm going to do a gas leaf blower this is the kind that i have and i have a backpack style one but they even have these handheld ones that are gas powered backpacks are quite expensive that's why i had to get mine secondary market but there are some even cheaper ones as well too okay so here's one home home light i'm not familiar with that brand usually i hear the ryobi the echo um Milwaukee Ryobi okay I'm gonna do this one okay 149 it's a handheld okay okay so we are going to have um, so those are new okay back to free this is uh, zero dollars. Back to new, we're going to have, let me pull up a quick calculator here. I'm not sure if you can see this on your screen, like screen capture. I'm going to do two prices. So we have a uh, 4.39 or the ones with the alternative energies. Five oh nine, okay, and with these prices, you get your entire, the big three, what I call the big three equipment. Now we're gonna go to the used market, which is my preferred way of buying lawn mowing equipment. There are such amazing stuff out there. Let's take a look. So, what I like to go to, this is Facebook. Facebook is a social media platform, and uh, you have, uh, you could chat family and friends and see how everybody's doing go to this part of the navigation marketplace Facebook marketplace is where you can buy used items from um, people nearby or even far away and uh, think of it as Craigslist you know people f sell their old items uh, lots of amazing things on here and they've really outdone themselves with how to browse how to shop how to connect with people especially how to um, how to message people back and forth. It's I'm really impressed with it. So with Marketplace, I'm going to search up Bush Lawn Mower and see what comes up. Now, the first thing that I, I did this a couple of times, the ones that say ship to you, um, ignore those because I think it's from far away and they do ship to you. It's, it's just that you have no way to test these. They see they're you know maybe they are legit but they're um, I think they they kind of refurbish but they have to send it to you and so you just you just can't test it you really gotta test these so I'm gonna go down till I see the one that says uh, a city here we go Roseville's next to me I'm in Minneapolis in St Paul and here we go here's one eighty dollars okay I'm just gonna there's one for thirty dollars okay so I'm gonna price that at fifty just in between fifty okay for a used. Okay, that is uh, much lower than the new price. Now I'm going to go for weed whacker. 
Now with this, I'm gonna I'm not gonna type in battery or gas. I'm just gonna see whatever is out there, kind of at the mercy of what's out there, um, because I have to kind of just consider what's out there. This one looks kind of old. I'm gonna ignore the ships to you. Here's one. Husqvarna is an amazing brand. Seventy dollars, gas powered. Leaf. This one is kind of interesting. It's a weed whacker and blower, but. $70, $60, $50, I'm going to go for $60, okay? I'm going to go for $60. There's one there. Um, and a lot of these look like they're gas-powered too, okay? And then the last one is leaf blower. Again, I'm not going to type in gas. I'm not going to type in battery. I'm just going to see what's out there and kind of cater to what's out there. So again, ignore the ships to you. Go straight to the one that has the name of a city as part of their listing. There's one here. This one that's in the box. Interesting. There's one that's 20, 75. Um, make sure it is cordless, okay? Make sure that there's no cord to it at all. Please, please. There's a backpack style. That's a ship to you though. Nope, not that kind. This one's pretty good, Craftsman Leaf Blower. Okay, and I'm going to like generously put this at 80, okay? All right, so uh, I'm gonna pull up the calculator again. These are like averages, okay? I'm gonna tell you, I can't always pinpoint a particular kind, but expect to pay 190, 190. Or the big three okay so we got free we got new and we got used now how does this going forward if you go new you go to the store and you buy new plain and simple it's really hard to negotiate with the big box store if you do free what happens if you do free first of all you might uh, again have these in your possession already but what do you do for uh, you could text close family and friends you could put a Facebook post to family and friends. Say, hey, I'm starting a simple lawn care service. I'm looking for anyone willing to donate their extra lawn equipment that's no longer needed or to be sold at an affordable price. It will be put to um, well use. I think I spelled that wrong. Please call or text me. So again, Please, you never know who's gonna respond to this. This one used. Now, when you do go on Facebook mar Marketplace and you are interested in one, you will, first of all, read their information. There's more information regarding it. They may have more pictures. And then you can send a message um, to that too. So this will, um, Okay, you saw that in real time. That was a mistake. But again, it's a real chat, just like how you can Facebook message your personal family and friends. And uh, the things to say is, is this still for sale? Can I come test it tonight or tomorrow? I like to give people two, two options that happen very soon. Don't say, can I test it next month, next year, later, open-ended. No, no, no. You want it to be very firm on your time, tonight or tomorrow, early. Do you take cash or forms of payment? Are you firm on the price? Okay, so I like to do this before and the messaging, not when you get there. Okay, these are the right questions to ask. But um, that's it. That is my way of getting your big three, your big three equipment on the way for uh, having a successful, easy, profitable summer lawn mowing business. You're free, new, and used. The way the prices that you should roughly pay for them, how, what types of things to say, and uh, you're on your way. Once you have exhausted all of those resources, yes, go to Amazon or go to brick and mortar storefronts, check out what they have, and get what is uh, get the equipment that you'll need to make your lawn mowing business complete. But here is the big takeaway. If you notice, at the whole time, I did not mention brands, manufacturer, 
house, uh, horsepower settings, engine, blade length, any of those things. Why? This is very, very important that you should know. With all of these equipment, when you decide any of this equipment to get, you need to ask yourself two questions. Number one, does this equipment work? Does this equipment work? And number two, can I afford it? I'll say that again. Does this equipment work and can I afford it? Those are all the questions you need to ask. Why is this the case? Well, as you can see, there are many more modules for you to go through and learn. And I don't want you to get stuck at having a particular brand, a particular model, the right horsepower, the right blade, blade length. These points, all of these are points of friction and are unnecessary in having an easy, quote, easy summer lawn mowing business. It doesn't matter if it's the certain type, these will be what I call time wasters and unnecessary fluff when establishing a business for the summer. And all throughout the many years of having a summer lawn mowing business, I didn't really care that much. I just needed to know, was it in my price range? Could I afford it? Can I pick it up tonight or tomorrow? And needed to start right away. Now, if I were a engineer that had to design the best lawnmower, if I owned a store that only sold lawnmower equipment, if I was a hobbyist who loved lawnmowing, then yes, I'm going to seek out the best, the prime, the platinum style equipment, horsepower, engine, those will matter so much. But in this context, you do not need that special type of, of branding of manufacturer. And instead, finish the modules, just know that there are more things to learn that are much more important and especially in the realm of getting contracts and earning money and things that really move the needle where you actually need to spend all your energy from, that is where it matters, not at the beginning here. Okay, so we're rounding out the first modules. You've made it this far, congratulations, high five. Now here are my pro tips and frequently asked questions. So here's a pro tip, please consider every year and maximum every other year, getting your lawnmower tune up. From my research, a tune-up, if you take it to a place that does tune-ups, is $99. They will cover changing the spark plug, the air filter, replacing or sharpening the blades, and doing an oil change. If anything costs more than $120, that usually involves changing the engine. They will give you a call and you can consider not going forward with it. And again, go consider, just get a new used lawnmower instead. I Myself, I can get to the point where I can do my own tune-up every year. They come with, there's little uh, tune-up kits at home centers that you can find your specific manufacturer and has little kits that includes the spark plug, the air filter, and the oil to even change the oil. And it's pretty neat. Please take care of your equipment. Don't throw it around. Don't lug it around. You will regret um, if any of the equipment is broken. That is my second pro tip. What is the most annoying thing of the business uh, throughout the whole thing we haven't even talked with clients with bad clients or weather my number one complaint of the most headache in an easy summer lawn mowing business is having broken equipment nothing is worse when the equipment is broken everything on the assembly line has stopped you have to stop what you're doing go home get it fixed somehow um, and then continuing mowing your clients lawn the next week or the following day and that is really um, ruins the entire rhythm of the business so i urge you to really really take care of your equipment treat it nice and it treats you nice frequently asked questions is can you rent should you consider renting equipment and the answer is no i wouldn't do that i don't think it's cost effective it's better if you have your own equipment another question you might get is what if you are at a potential client's house and they're really nice and this says, hey, you can even borrow my own equipment, use my equipment. I would urge to avoid that and I don't recommend it. And the reason is because it brings, again, points of friction. Points of friction is bad, bad, bad. If you need to mow their lawn and if it's sometimes it may be in a locked garage, you'll always have to contact them to unlock their garage. Uh, sometimes they may not be home or uh, in an extreme case, they may be moments of awkwardness between you and the client 
or maybe the wife didn't agree or the child didn't agree and there's confusion. All of these, again, leads to point of friction. Avoid using your client's equipment. Use your own, bring your own. It's much, much better that way. Now I have a question for you. Out of all the things we learned, let me throw you some really quick questions then see if you were paying attention. Question is, what is the most important factor when searching for equipment? A, the best top tier manufacturer, B, brand new, or C, if you can afford it and it works. Now, if the answer is C, then you're correct. Go for what you can afford and the equipment works, you'll be off to a great start. And this is what I call the box. After over six years of mowing lawns for our clients with my children, I have uh, narrowed down to what you will absolutely only need to bring to complete your lawn mowing equipment. So what we have here is a tub. Uh, any tub is good, but I, this size looks good. It looks almost like the size of a laundry basket. Uh, it, this is particularly a 76 quart tub. Uh, from Target, any major retailer would easily have them. So going in, this side is absolutely essential. And these items are optional, but can be greatly considered should you need to modify your loading and unloading style. So we have the tub, which is essential. In it goes the gas can. Now the gas can itself I like the two gallon. I feel like it's just enough. The one gallon is kind of small, three, four, those are way, way too big. This is a two gallon uh, style. I upgraded to a more fancier type of spout that can kind of go and stop and go gasoline. But please, please, that you don't need it. You can go with the old fashioned spout, have a cap, and sometimes we even use uh, tissue paper to stop it from leaking. So get a gas can two gallons, you're good to go. So gas can goes first. I like to make sure that the spout is always inside the tub. Not like this, but always inside. In it, I'll bring uh, batteries if I need to bring batteries. Uh, my trimmer and my trimmer weed whacker is battery powered and I need to carry extra batteries, make sure that they are charged. After this, we have uh, extra line for my trimmer. My weed whacker, often the line breaks when you're trimming along the edges and you need to put extra line in the weed whacker trimmer. Along the same note, depending on who your manufacturer is, but inside the trimmer, there's the line that I just spoke about, but actually inside what holds the line is this cassette. And sometimes the cassette hole, which holds the line can actually break, making this whole thing useless. So I would have to actually put in an entire new cassette that comes with its line as well. This is trash bags, or better yet, if you can get composting green style bags, these will be for any trash, or most likely if your client wants to have clippings picked up and bagged, you can use compostable um, yard bags. This is a sort of a, a wire cutter that's, or I would say a really strong scissor, but it's a wire cutter, a construction, construction shears. Any very, very strong shears would do. It helps cut lines, cuts uh, little things that has um, always been useful for me to use. This is a folding style serrated saw. Sometimes you see this in the camping section. It is one of the most useful tools that uh, it's in my bin. It helps cut branches, twigs, uh, as big as my wrist here. And it's very small uh, and compactable so that it fits inside the bin. So there's no need for pruners or loppers. I have earmuffs to cover any loud noise, especially when you're doing lawn mowing and the trimmer and the leaf blower, which can get pretty loud. These are working construction gloves. Get the gloves that are, have the grip inside, padding inside. Um, it really helps, really makes the job less tiring. You'll get less fatigue and it even adds strength to carrying, letting things go, pushing, just by, 
just by wearing gloves can really help uh, strengthen and you know, making the job less exhausting. I do have a, a mat. You could easily use a tarp, but I put this on the bottom of our car when we put all of the lawn mowing equipment on so it doesn't dirty the car. Moving over to the optional items, I have some cones inside the house and sometimes uh, at a job site, at, a cli at my client's yard or at their driveway, I'll put these around just so that people will know that this place is occupied, don't come near, there's equipment laying around, try to go around and it's just a way to warn any drivers that um, to avoid this spot. Of a vest, if you wanna wear a vest to make sure that you're seen brightly lit while you're mowing the lawn, you could have a vest. This is an optional item, a, a type of heavy bag, heavy enough, but not too heavy. And I just grabbed a, a, a bag full of grass seed. This is essential so that when I put the lawnmower in the vehicle, it tends to stop and go roll since it has wheels whenever I brake and accelerate the car. Um, I put this down right on the edge of the wheel so that it doesn't slide back and forth. It, and this really depends on your vehicle. If there's, if it's snug enough, you don't need it. If there's a lot of space, you will need something to stop and go prevent the lawnmower from rolling around in the car. I tried these wheel chokes, but they just don't work. Oftentimes the inside of the car is carpeted and it can't grip. It can't grip on the surface of that floor to hold the wheel in place. And all in all, I've experimented, and that's why this bag that's not too heavy, but not too light, really does the job well. And then here I made ramps, building a ramp that's optional. If there's only one of you mowing the lawn, you will need a ramp since it's too heavy to carry the lawn mower by yourself. But in my situation, we have multiple people, my sons, we go all together to our clients' yards, and we can easily lift the lawnmower without ever using a ramp. But I really wanted to have this included in case you are a single person lawn mowing and you will know how to build a ramp. Hey, another thing that goes into your box is the different type of fuel. This is a fuel mix that has gasoline and oil mixed into it. It's for a two cycle engine. What is a two cycle engine? Two cycle engines are engines that are smaller and it doesn't have a separate oil tank. So because it doesn't have a separate oil tank, the fuel gas and oil has to be mixed together and poured into one container vessel. Traditionally, these will be your leaf blower, your trimmer, chainsaws. They all have a smaller engine and cannot afford an extra component of a four cycle that needs its additional own oil tank reserve. So you will need a 50 to one mix to pour into your equipment that needs fuel. And that also goes into your box. Now we are on to the box. The box will be your best friend. Should you prepare it correctly? And these are the items that you will need. I'm gonna go line by line and I'm gonna go to just Home Depot so that you will know what you should pay for what you should uh, set aside money for to build your box correctly. So I'm going to walk with you step by step. Okay, so the first off, you want to get a box or a bin, a plastic bin that's around 70 quart. I'm going to look up here, uh, 70 quart box. Okay, I'm just going to take the first price that I see. Okay, so there's a one here. I'm going to put it at... Um, $16.98 and you know forgive me but for simplicity's sake I'm gonna round it up okay so we have $17 next thing we need a tarp something to lay on the bed of our vehicle we need a tarp you know there's quite a few here but I'm gonna go with something that is the cheapest and the smallest you do not need anything big you're gonna end up folding it and folding it anyway so this one here it's the um, you can kind of see my mouse here the 12 by 10 by 12 and you're gonna fold this little guy over and over again it's gonna take up too much room anyways but it's also priced at $16.98 I'm gonna also round it up to 17 
gas can. And again, two gallon is the best. Not one, not five, but two gallon is a great size. They seem to only have these like fancier ones, these no spill ones. Um, they're and they're more they're more pricey. They're they're more expensive. Okay, um, you can easily. I'm a big fan. These are not deal breakers. You can get the very simple, the very simple types of gas cans that are just the really traditional ones. So sometimes I even stick like a, a piece of tissue or a um, napkin in here when I lost a cover uh, for many years, and that's fine. So um, I'm gonna just write this down to twenty dollars, but please, please know that you can easily get the cheap one. Okay, please, I can't emphasize that enough. You don't have to get the more expensive one. Next one is a one of my favorite tools, uh, folding saw. Do not get pruners. Do not get loppers. You get a folding saw. Okay, so here are a price here. I'm going to choose, um, this is 7 inch. I'm going to go for the 10 inch one. It's a little bit, just a tiny bit longer. But um, you don't, you do not get a long one. Do, do not get a long one. You hear me? <laughs> I think 10 inch is plenty. And here's one at $19.98. I'm going to price it at $20. you are this you are going to love that tool. I'm going to look for a trimmer line. Now this depends on uh, the who, what, what manufacturer trimmer you're using. If you're using Echo, if you're using Black and Decker, if you're using Milwaukee, um, it's going to vary manufacturer to manufacturer. Okay, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to pull up the first thing that I see so that you'll kind of get a um, an idea of what. How much line costs because you will need to replace those because they do break often and they come in these like plastic containers this is really like the kind that i i have in my own box here's one here um 250 feet trimmer line this is echo and it's at 1597 so i'm going to price that at 16 just to make it simple you will also need the trimmer spool okay so trimmer spool is um Now, it is actually the part that goes inside the spool, inside the trimmer where the line is wound it up in. Sometimes the spool will actually break because it has so much velocity that the line goes through these tiny little holes and um, you'll need to replace the spool. And it's not, it's not hard at all. And it looks exactly like this. this is, I get a stack of three. You can get a singular, but I get a stack of three. And almost always one spool will last one season, unless you have like 20 lawns, you know, you might go through quite a bit of spools, but uh, one spool for one season. And this is a, a three pack, but I'm going to, um, here, I'll price that at one. Okay. You know, one pack is, I'll put it at $9. Nine. We need work gloves. My other favorite, favorite tool, work gloves. These will make your life so much easier, um, and you're gonna love them. Now, some of these look like pretty awesome, you know, like, um, but my favorite ones are these kinds. Um, they have a great grip on the outside. They even have like a sometimes have like a Velcro here, but, um, and it's the one that I use. So, <laughs> they are ten uh, ten dollars for a pair, and um, you won't regret it. You're gonna they will make you feel really, really strong. And, and it's much safer as well. Uh, eye protector, protection glasses. It really, uh, it really inexpensive, no big deal. Here's one at um, 647, I'm gonna price that at $7. Okay, so just throw it in your bin. Ear covers. Ear protection. All right. Ear protection, please, please, nothing fancy. Um, here, here's one. Safety ear muff. You got to price that at six dollars. Okay. Just throw it in your box. You will need uh, if if you do have a you know a um, two cycle engine equipment for your trimmer or for your leaf blower. 
you will need 51 fuel mix unless you are all battery for those two items you don't need it but um if you do you will need 50 fuel you cannot use regular gasoline and these are priced at i'm going to round it up to six dollars okay here's a you might need a, a grass seed bag or a sand bag to hold the lawnmower in place in your car so it doesn't roll around okay um here's one for uh 15 dollars okay so this is optional it just depends on this how the space in your car is it turns out you may not need it okay but if you do it's 15 dollars lastly is compost bags i like the green kind i don't like the the paper kind for leaves but this is a great it's a whole roll and we're gonna do we're gonna round it up at 22 dollars okay so i'm going to add it up for you let's get a calculator let's move it here okay you ready I'm going to do 17 plus 17 plus 20 plus 20 plus 16 plus 9 plus 10 plus 7 plus 6 plus 6 plus 16 plus 22. Okay, so 165. Total 165. And please note this is sort of the high end. I'm choosing the more, um, the higher price gas can and all of these have been rounded up. So this box, which will become your best friend, you're gonna set aside about $160, $170 to get this going. And this is on top of your equipment that you have, okay? So this is really useful, most useful. You will need your box. And please know that the startup cost for having your box can uh, come up to this point, all right? Which of the following items do you not need in your box? We have a pruners we have b gloves or c gas tank if you answered a pruners that's right never in my time having a summer lawn mowing business have i ever needed pruners i love my foldable serrated saw it does it does wonders and does the job okay so we made it we made it to the end we got homework don't worry it's just a little little homework so for tonight in the next just 10, 10 minutes, the next 11 minutes, search online brand new equipment and go to Facebook Marketplace and go to Craigslist and find what's out there. You'll be surprised at how much free stuff or really, really affordable stuff there is out there in the lawn mowing space. And I want you to get started.